Praise God and welcome to the NBCC Worldwide Broadcast today. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for viewing this message whenever you're viewing it. Amen. It is our prayer that you would be uh, encouraged. Hallelujah. And that you will be motivated. Amen. Uh, by the word of the Lord today and the message will add value to your life in Jesus name. Amen. And so we bless God for you. Hallelujah. Now today, beloved, we're decreeing and believing God. After watching that video, we're decreeing and believing in Jesus' name that God has uh, in store for us, amen, uh, what he wants to move in our lives and how he wants to move in our lives. And we're believing God, hallelujah, that all things in Christ can be made new. Amen. That in Christ, we can be made new in Jesus' name. So we're believing God for that. And we're going to make this confession. Will you make this confession with me? And it's based on 2 Corinthians 5.17 from that video. Amen. And we're simply going to declare right now in Jesus' name, out with the old and in with the new. In Jesus' name, it is so. Hallelujah. Out with the old and in with the new. In Jesus' name, it is so. And one more time, out with the old. And in with the new, in Jesus' name, it is so. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today. Hallelujah for your word, for your presence, for your power. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the fellowship of like-minded believers. Amen. I thank you, Lord God, for the unbeliever that may be viewing in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that no matter wherever this message, hallelujah, this broadcast is viewing and being aired, Lord God, that it is, hallelujah, doing what you said it would do that your word will go forth and not return unto you void, but it will accomplish everything that you want it to and prosper us in the area you intended to do so in Jesus' name. Today, God, we thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive and mind to think with and understand what you're saying to your people today through your word. Amen. Holy Spirit, you're the teacher. So teach today, bring revelation knowledge, bring spiritual understanding, release spiritual wisdom to us today in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that you're going to confirm your word with miracles, signs, and wonders. And we give your name, the glory, and the praise today. In Jesus' name, we decree and declare that it is so. And so it is. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, beloved, glory to God, we just, again, just thank God for his spirit, amen, and for his power and his presence. Glory be to God. So, uh, join me now, amen, and let's get ready to um, just get in this word and see what God is going to do, amen. Glory be to God and what God would be saying to us today in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Now, today we're going to talk about that part. Uh, I want to continue in the sermon series, amen, so much more series by speaking on that part, emphasizing the essential parts of the process that the Holy Spirit would have you and I to agree upon and call for our cooperation so that we can experience God's abundance. Amen. You know, over the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about moving from scarcity, from the fear of scarcity to uh, trusting God's abundance. And in this series of so much more, we've been talking about how important it is that God wants us to grow in our relationship with him. Amen. And experience uh, a substance over style and that we're poised to proceed and that we're understanding that God wants us to develop gravity, gravitas, so that we have a core and an anchor that helps us make it through the transitions that we are experiencing in life so that we can experience the God's, God's abundance. Hallelujah. His abundant supply, his provision, his presence, where we grow deeper in our relationship with him. And so today, I want to continue in the last sermon of this series and entitle and call it that part. Amen. Now, that part begins with understanding how to live in this world 
hallelujah, and not be conformed to this world. I said that part, how to live in this world, hallelujah, and not be conformed to this world. A new mindset is required to live in God's abundance and maintain your spiritual, emotional, and moral equilibrium. Amen. In this world, saints of God, elevation often disturbs the balance or or God's rhythm of grace in our lives, leading to pride and a sense of self-sufficiency and eventually a fall. Chuck Swindle said this. He said, it's ironic, but more of us can hang tough through a demotion than through a promotion. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. It's ironic, but more of us can hang tough through a demotion than through a promotion. Beloved, God was trying, hallelujah, as we discovered the last two weeks, God was trying to promote the Israelites. He was trying to promote and advance, hallelujah, the children of Israel, hallelujah, from fear of scarcity to abundance. He was trying to get them from the head, from the tail to the head, hallelujah, from beneath to above, from below, hallelujah, to above. He was trying to move them and promote them, amen, but they couldn't handle it. God told Moses, I've taken a good long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know all about their pain. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Hallelujah. That God takes notice of us, that God is looking at us, that God, that you're on God's radar. Amen. And that God knows what you're going through. Hallelujah. And how long you've been going through it. Amen. And he knows the pain and the discomfort. Hallelujah. That you are experiencing because of the current situation that you're in right now. And I'm here to tell you today, he's trying to remote you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you're by yourself, say God's trying to promote me. If you're with someone else, tell them God's trying to promote you. Amen. So God tells Moses to tell the children of Israel, hallelujah, I know all about what you've been going through. I know all about your slave masters. I, I know all about the black, <coughs> excuse me. I know all about the pain that you are experiencing. And now I've come down to help them. Pry them loose from the grip of Egypt. Get them out of that country and bring them into a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey. And that's from Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 through 8. Church, I'm here to tell you today, God is trying to promote you. Can you handle it? Amen. From the children of Israel to every believer today, to every new believer to come, God does not want you to conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can experience God's good, acceptable, and perfect will for your life. That part. Amen. Glory be to God in Jesus' name. You've heard this proverb before. You can take the person out of the place, but you can't take the place out of the person. Or you may have heard it this way. You can take the man out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of the man. Or in our case today that we're studying, you can take the Israelite out of the Israelite out of Egypt, but you can't take Egypt out of the Israelite. That part. Hallelujah. A person, beloved, will continue to display the inherent qualities of the place from which they grew up or spend a significant amount of time in, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Why? Why is this? Because it is deep-seated within them. But beloved, God wants to deal with that part. Hallelujah. He wants to disturb and disrupt and dismantle that faulty thinking that alienates and self-banishes you from the life of God's abundance. Amen. Your solution is found in the... And, is found in an empowering and evolving relationship with Jesus. Therefore, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, that is joined to him by faith, hallelujah, in him as your savior, he has become an entirely new person. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. Hallelujah. Saints of God, I'm here to tell you today, glory be to God. I want to exhort you and encourage you and tell you today that God is ready to deal with that part of your life. Amen. 
God is ready to deal with that part, that area. Glory be to God. God is ready to deal with that area of your life that has you stuck in a rut that has you not moving forward, that has you feeling less valuable than you ought to, glory to God, that God is here to deal with that today in Jesus' name. God wants you to know today that it is possible, glory be to God, to not only take the person out of the place, but to get the place out of the person. It is possible to take the man out of the ghetto and get the ghetto out of the man. It is possible to take the Israelite out of Egypt and get Egypt out of the Israelite. I'm here to tell you today that God wants to deal with that part in Jesus name. And you can, beloved, listen to this. You can, by the work and power of the Holy Spirit, undo the cycle of negativity by renewing your mind and retraining your habits. Hallelujah. Here are three today, only three. I'm only going to give you three, three life work principles to assist you in this process. What, (laughs) excuse me, what process? Excuse me. Hmm. The process of renewing your mind and retraining your habits, the process of getting Egypt out of you, the process of getting the old out of you, the process of getting that old place out of you, that part. Saints of God, the first life work principle for today is awareness is the greatest agent for change. I'm going to say it again. Awareness is the greatest agent for change. Go with me to the third chapter of the book of Hebrews and listen to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Beginning at verse seven. It says, this is why the Holy Spirit says, if you only would listen, if only you would listen to his voice. Glory to God this day. Hallelujah. Hear the message behind the message. Hear God talk to you today. Not just listen to me, but hear what God is saying to you. If only you would listen to his voice this day. Don't make him angry by hardening your hearts like your ancestors did during the days of their rebellion when they were tested in the wilderness. There your fathers tested me over and over tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles. For 40 years, they still doubted me. This ignited my anger with that generation. And I said about them, they wandered in their hearts, just like they do with their feet. And they refused to learn my ways. I don't know if you caught that. Glory be to God. God says they wandered in their hearts, just like they do their feet. I'm here to tell you, whatever you're thinking, glory to God, you're going to go in the direction of your most dominant thoughts. So if you're wandering in your heart, if you're a wanderer in your thoughts, your feet is going to go in the direction of those thoughts in Jesus' name. And so Jesus, God says, they wandered in their hearts, just like their feet, hallelujah, and they refused to learn my ways, amen. It's not that they couldn't, They refused to learn his ways. He says, my heart grieved over them. So I said, they'll never keep their minds on God. They refused to walk down my road. Exasperated, I decree they'll never get where they're going. They will not enter into my rest. So search your hearts every day, my brothers and sisters, and make sure that none of you has evil or unbelief hiding within you, for it will lead you astray and make you unresponsible, unresponsive to the living God. So far, the word of the Lord. Amen. And that's from Hebrews chapter three. So what God said to me here, hallelujah, is that change does not automatically happen. Before change can take place, there must be awareness that change is necessary. Remember, the first life work principle, life work principle is that change, listen to this, Change, I mean, awareness is an agent of change. Hallelujah. Awareness is an agent for change. Change does not automatically happen. Before change can take place, there must be an awareness that change is necessary. The Holy Spirit says, hallelujah, uh, 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 the Bible said that the Holy Spirit makes us aware that we need to change. Glory be to God. I said the Holy Spirit working inside of you, believer, your consciousness, that's the Holy Spirit making you aware that change needs to take place. Like the Israelites, we too can suffer from negative muscle memory in our thinking and feelings. Muscle memory can also encode and facilitate negative muscle behavior. 
what you're talking about. Listen to this. One of the most common examples of, uh, uh, of this is bad posture. If you sit or stand with bad posture over time, your brain will remember that pattern and automatically recreate it whenever you are sitting or standing. The Bible says over and over again, the Israelites tried God's patience, even though they saw his miracles for 40 years, they still doubted him. Over and over again, do you see that negative muscle memory? Over and over again, they kept trying his patience, even though they saw his miracles for 40 years. Saints of God, that means that the negative muscle memory had set up a pattern in their thinking, which eventually influenced their behavior. See, saints of God, you can take the Israelite out of Egypt, but you can't get Egypt out of the Israelite. That part, when you suffer from habitual thinking that is undermining your progress, you have a hard time creating change. It's because you're trapped in a mentally and spiritually ingrained system of thinking and believing in Jesus' name. For example, feelings of low self-worth, depression, fear of change, or even something like getting stuck in a lifestyle rut, they all result from mental muscle memory and need to be untrained with the renewing of your mind through the power of the Holy Spirit. If you are feeling today, listen, if today you're feeling bad about yourself or professionally or personally stuck, your problem is likely you have been blinded and trapped in a habitual loop. Glory be to God. You are stuck. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this. You are stuck here, not because you're weak or ungifted or born this way or unloved. Glory be to God in Jesus name. You are suffering at the hand of your subconscious muscle grooves from a negative thought pattern that's been planted by the devil in Jesus name. The Bible says, listen to this. The Bible says that they never got what they were going. The Bible says that they never got where they were going. In the book of you, the children, they never got where they were going. God had a plan. God had a destination, but they never got there. How many of you today can stop and pause right now, hallelujah, and agree with the Holy Spirit today that God has a plan, that God has a destiny for your life? Now, the question is, are you making progress? Are you getting there? Or are you suffering like the children of Israel where you're suffering from that, that habitual loop and you're never going to get to where you're going? They never enter into God's rest and best for their lives. And because of their unbelief and doubt, saints of God, that was leading them astray from where God was trying to take them. Instead of going glory to God into the rest of God, into the best of God, they were being led astray. And that made them unresponsive to the living God. They couldn't even respond appropriately, hallelujah, to what God was trying to do. They couldn't respond appropriately to what God was trying to do in their life. They couldn't even appropriate what grace had provided for them because they were stuck in this habitual loop in Jesus' name. Beloved, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and break every curse. He came to undo, glory to God, everything that the enemy set up in your life. He came to undo it in Jesus' name. God wants to break that habitual loop in your life. God wants to change that faulty thinking in your life. Saints of God, you can undo your cycle of negative thinking and feelings. You don't have to walk around with a dark cloud over your head in Jesus' name. You don't have to walk around thinking that things can't get better and that things can't change and that you cannot live differently. The devil is a lie. Saints of God, you can undo this cycle of negative thinking simply by consistently retraining your think, renewing your mind and retraining your habits in Jesus name. This is why the Bible encourages you and I, hallelujah, according to that scripture in Hebrews chapter three, to search your hearts every day. 
Hallelujah. And make sure that doubt and unbelief are not hiding within you. Every day, you got to examine yourself. Yes, every day, saints of God. This is, hallelujah, an everyday battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we're wrestling against powers and principalities. Hallelujah. Every day. And so every day, you got to search your heart. Hallelujah. So don't you, so that you don't become like those, like them. Hallelujah. Awareness. Like I said, the first life principle is awareness is the greatest agent for change. You cannot change if you are not aware that change needs to take place. Life work principle number two, that part, commitment to the process of transformation is your part in your progress. Hallelujah. Turn with me and listen to this from the book of Colossians chapter three, beginning at verse one. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ. Act like it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up, glory to God, and be alert to what is going on around Christ. Glory be to God. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, glory be to God, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. Hallelujah. I want to jump right in there on that last part, saints of God. I'm here to tell you, even though folk around you don't see what God is doing inside of you, that does not mean that God is not at work in your life. Stop waiting for people to sign off and confirm, glory to God, what you know and believe that God is doing in your life. It may be invisible to the spectator, hallelujah, but you know it to be true. You know it to be real. You know that change is taking place with inside of you and so stop waiting for man's permission and approval. Hallelujah. Stop waiting for people to sign off on what you believe and know. Hallelujah. And trust that God is doing in your life. It may be invisible to spectators, but it is Christ. Hallelujah. It is Christ. It is God at work in your life. Saints of God. And so what God is saying to me, hallelujah, to tell you in the second part is that your commitment, your commitment, hallelujah, is necessary in Jesus' name, to the process of transformation. See, where are my serious people today? Where are my serious believers? The Bible said, if you're serious about this, where are my serious believers? Are you serious this time about changing and living differently? Then act like it, think like it, feel like it, be like it, believe like it, so you can live like it. Glory be to God. See, saints of God, God said, if you're serious, Hallelujah. Then you ought to act like you're serious. If you're serious, you ought to think like you're serious. If you're serious, you ought to feel like you're serious and be like you're serious and believe like you're serious. Why? So that you can live like you're serious in the name of Jesus. See, saints of God, you got to commit to the process of change and transformation. You can't hem and haw. You can't half step this thing. If you really truly believe, hallelujah, that there is something better for you, that there is God's abundance awaiting you, then you got to commit to the process of change and transformation. That part. See, scholars have argued that commitment to change represents a behavioral intention to work toward success of the change rather than, watch this, just reflecting a favorable disposition toward it. Amen. Glory to God. See, it's one thing to have good intentions. It's one thing to have uh, uh, rose-colored glass thoughts about, you know, uh, thoughts about it. It is one thing to have favorable, uh, uh, a favorable disposition toward something, and it's a whole nother thing to commit to intentionally working toward it. Amen. See, saints of God, when you commit yourself to it, hallelujah, you're saying that I'm going to bring all that I am to bear on what I believe is the goal and objective in Jesus name. See, when you are serious about change, something or someone, you commit to it or them. Hallelujah. Don't say that you're serious, Paul is saying. Don't say that you're serious, but unwilling to commit to changing your focus and your pursuit. Hallelujah. Don't say that you're serious, but unwilling to commit to doing what it takes to break the cycle and cancel the automatic repeat button in your head. See, saints of God, you got to commit yourself 
to getting out of the rut that you're in. Glory be to God. It's January. Hallelujah. And some people are already finding themselves in a rut. Hallelujah. That same old, same old that I talked about last week. Amen. You got to commit yourself to getting out of that rut. You can't wishfully wish, uh, wish yourself out of that, that rut. You can't Think yourself out of that rut. You got to commit yourself to getting out of that rut in Jesus name. Glory be to God. See, you got to stop. As Paul says, you got to stop shuffling along. Hallelujah. Eyes to the ground. Absorbed with the things right in front of you. Saints of God, you got your head down. Glory be to God. You just shuffling along. You just going along. You stuck on autopilot. Saints of God, you're never going to get out of that rut. You're never going to break that cycle. If you're just shuffling along and your eyes are to the ground and you are absorbed with those things right there in front of you. Glory to God. You got to have a long term game. You got to have a long term plan. Amen. You got to see yourself beyond this week and beyond next week. You got to see yourself. Hallelujah. Into February and into March. Amen. You got to see where you want to be. Glory be to God. By the end of this year. And you got to set your eyes. Glory be to God. So Paul says you got to stop being absorbed with the things that are right in front of you. How do I do that, Paul? Paul said, look up. Glory be to God. When he says, look up what he's talking about, people, he's talking about pray. He's talking about have a relationship with God. He's talking about shift your focus, hallelujah, and shift your prayer life in Jesus' name. And so that you begin to look, hallelujah, not to the things and not to material things, but you look to the heavens. You look to God. You look up, glory to God. You elevate your eyesight. You elevate, glory to God, your vision in Jesus' name. You come up. Tell your neighbor. Tell you, tell somebody, come up, hallelujah. And he says, look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. Saints of God, that part, glory be to God, that gets me going, amen, because there's action going on around Christ, but you've got to look up. See, you got to see things from his perspective. Glory be to God. This message is about, saints of God, you seeing things from God's perspective, not man's perspective, not your perspective, but God's perspective. See, God's perspective for your life is more than conformity to this world. That's your old dead life. But the new abundant life is more than cut, paste, copy, and repeat. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life, and God wants your commitment to that life. He wants your commitment to the process, yo. He wants your commitment. Hallelujah. Stop. Watch this. Stop cutting, pasting, and copying, and repeating what you see around you. Stop cutting, pasting, and copying, and repeating what you see your friends around you doing. Glory be to God. Or what you see the world is doing in Jesus' name. It's time that you stop conforming to the ways of this world and stop conforming to the thinking of this world and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the only way that's going to happen is that you got to commit yourself. So the first point was, like where principle was, awareness is an agent for change. Glory to God in Jesus name. And then commitment, life work principle number two, commitment to the process of transformation and change is required. Amen. It's your part. And then the final point for the day, hallelujah, life work principle number three is hallelujah, deliberate renewing and retraining. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 20 through 24, it says this, but that's no life for you. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, been well instructed in the truth, precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. Glory. Stop trying to hold on to it. Glory be to God. It has expired. It has served its purpose. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it in Jesus' name. And then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct. As God, watch this, as God accurately reproduces his character in you. See, saints of God, Paul says, if the Gentiles' core problem is a distorted is, is, is a distorted mind, then the solution can only be a renewing of that mind and a retraining of the behavioral habits. 
Glory be to God. See, there is, watch this, there is uh, 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 uh. There is an understanding here that if it is if 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 God is calling for a new mind, saints of God, then He is saying, saints of God, it is possible, saints of God, that you got to learn how to let that old way of thinking go. Hallelujah! Paul said, "That's no life for you." How many of you are aware that to be stuck in a habitual habitual negative loop is not living? Hallelujah. How many of you know stuck in a rut is no life for a believer? Amen. And learning, watch this, is intentional and not accidental. Glory be to God. You don't accidentally learn something. Glory be to God. It's intentional in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Paul's main issue here is transformation, change of destinies, and by the renewing of minds and retraining of behavioral habits. I'm here to tell you God has a destiny for you. But in order to get there, you're going to have to be deliberate in the renewing and retraining. Hallelujah. The renewing of your mind and the retraining of your behavioral habits. The language of getting rid of everything and connected to the old way of life and taking on an entirely new way of life. That language that Paul is using here, he is using this language because it is intentional and deliberate. He says, you got to get rid of it. Glory be to God. And you got to take on this life. He's saying it's intentional. It's deliberate. See, beloved, at bedtime, you don't accidentally take off your clothes and mistakenly put on your PJs. Oh, no, no, no. You are intentional and deliberate. The only way of living that God wants you to do, saints of God, I mean, the old way of living that God says is rotten, you got to get rid of. That old way of life is rotten through and through, saints of God, and it is the human self without God. That old way of living, saints of God, it is deprived, it is deluded, it is deceived into some downward spiral of fleshly desires and thinking. And the solution, glory be to God, requires ongoing, continual renewal and retraining. See, saints of God, what God wants to do in your life, you're going to have to, it's going to require you to be deliberate and intentional. Saints of God. See, God is trying to uh, 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 do a good old fashioned, hallelujah, renewing a God fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. Man, I love that, saints of God. I love how God is breaking that down. He says, listen to this. I'm here to tell you, beloved, he says it's not on you, but it involves you. It's not just you by yourself. God is doing this work. The Holy Spirit is doing this work inside of you. Beloved, negative muscle memory would have you to believe that the human depravity that you may be experiencing right now, a life without God, hallelujah, and twisted human thinking is the conclusion of the matter, but not so. Glory be to God. Conformity does not have to be your destiny and your final answer. In Christ. Yes, you can take the person out of the place and you can take the place out of the person. Hallelujah, that part in Jesus' name. Glory to God. You can take the person out of the ghetto and you can take the ghetto out of the person. Hallelujah. You can take the Israelite out of Egypt and you can take Egypt out of the Israelite. But you got to be deliberate. You got to be intentional. The renewing and retraining is the restructuring of your thinking by the Holy Spirit as the result of of a direct encounter with the love of God in the person of Christ. See, saints of God, it's God's love for you that helps you to renew. It's God's love for you that helps you to retrain. See, in God's love, there is grace. In God's love, there is mercy. In God's love, there is discipline. In God's love, there is patience. In God's love, there is gentleness and kindness. In God's love, there is long suffering. In God's love, there is the training and the retraining and the restructuring. See, in God's love, Hallelujah. You have the assurance that nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. And so God is gracious with you. God is giving you time through his grace to retrain you. Glory to God to help you to retrain and restructure. No, to help you retrain your behavioral habits and to renew your mind. See, saints of God, it's called process. Hallelujah. It's called process. 
I discovered saints of God, and I'm sure you two will agree with me. It's not one and off or one and done. No, it's a process of change and transformation. It happens over time. Hallelujah. It happens. Oh, it's your maturation. It's your transformation, which happens over time from the inside out. And that's what's going on. He that has begun a good work in you is faithfully, hallelujah, committed to the process of maturing you from the inside out. God, saints of God, is committed, hallelujah, to your renewing and your retraining. Are you? So saints of God, in summation, I'm telling you this today, hallelujah, that part, God wants to deal with that area of your life. He wants to bring you into that abundance, but God needs you first to become aware that you need to change. Number two, God needs your commitment. And then number three, hallelujah, you have to be deliberate, hallelujah, in your uh, renewing and your retraining in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you today. Hallelujah for every person listening. I thank you for the believer that is listening, Lord God, that understands that they are in process of change and maturation and transformation. I thank you, Lord God, that you're committed to doing the work. Hallelujah. The heavy lifting in their lives. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're moving even now as I pray for them in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that habitual habit, that habitual loop, that 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 thing, Lord God, that keeps holding them back, that rut that they're in. I'm praying for them to be unstuck today. Hallelujah. By the aid and the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm praying, Lord God, that they will be seriously committed to living differently, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then, Father God, I'm praying today for the unbeliever today. Hallelujah. They need to get out of that rut in Jesus' name. That's a dead end life. That's a dead end goal going nowhere life in Jesus name to be unsaved. They need to come into the full revelation of your love for them, Lord God, through your grace, Lord God, not sin consciousness, but your grace, your love for them. So we're praying today, hallelujah, that the conclusion, even now, even before the conclusion that you're saving them, that they will yield themselves, hallelujah, in Jesus name, glory to God, and accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior, Hallelujah, God. And for those that are saved, Lord God, but do not have a church home that are not connected, Lord God, even if that, that cannot physically connect with us, but they will connect with us and become a part of the E-Church of New Beginnings Community Church Worldwide, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray that they'll reach out to us, Lord God, and get connected to us. Hallelujah. And become a part of our fellowship and ministry, our E-Church, Lord God. We thank you. And I pray this prayer in faith. In Jesus' name, it is so, and so it is. Amen. But listen, beloved, I prayed for you. Yeah, I did. If you're a believer, I prayed for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you're an unbeliever, I prayed for you. Amen. If you're a believer that is not connected to a, a church family, amen, it's not a building, it's a people, hallelujah, then I pray that you'll consider becoming a part of our e-church, amen, our e-church family as we begin to go worldwide, amen, and take this gospel message all around the world in Jesus' name. So at the conclusion, will you please, ma'am, please, sir, go to our website, nbccdetroit.org, and connect with us. Hallelujah. Connect with Christ. Hallelujah. And become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory be to God. And then connect with this church through covenant partnership and fellowship where you can learn and grow and contribute. And then finally connect with us as we connect with the world. Amen. Through prayer, giving and serving. Amen. So take a moment right now. Do that. Amen. Give if you're part of our text. Give, amen. Follow the information. Give by way of text, amen. In Jesus' name, connect with us, serve, and then pray with us, amen, as we take this gospel message all around the world. Now listen, I thank you for this time that you've allowed me to uh, spend with you today, amen. And if you're watching this, hallelujah, on the day, the last uh, Sunday of January, amen, I want to alert you and inform you that you, if you live in the Detroit metropolitan area, amen, or if you live out of state and you just want to come, hallelujah, 
our next on next uh, Sunday, the first Sunday in February, once a month, we have Assembly Sunday, amen, in the city of, the, uh, of Warren, Michigan. And we're inviting you to go to our web page, get the information and join us in person, travel, get there, whatever you can do. Come on and be a part of that service. Amen. 10 a.m. next Sunday, the first Sunday in February. We're going to have Holy Communion. We're going to have worship, praise and worship. Amen. And then we're going to get into the word of the Lord. Amen. And we're going to be talking about say less. Amen. So join us this coming Sunday in the in Warren, Michigan at Macomb Community College. Amen. For uh, our second assembly Sunday of the year. Amen. Travel in, get there, be a part of that service. We start at 10 a.m. Amen. And then if you can't get there, amen, we still have our e-service. Hallelujah. Our e-church will still broadcast at 11 a.m. in Jesus name. So either way, we're getting the word of God to you. Amen. But come on out and be a part of that fellowship. God bless you. We encourage you. We love you. Hallelujah. Here at NBCC Worldwide. God bless you. Until next week. It is so. And so it is. Amen. Hallelujah.